Twitter, Twitter account, C3 Lingo. I'm happy, as always, to announce the next guest. He does not shy away from entering into conflict with the German Foreign Intelligence Agency. Who of you knows D Kicks, the commercial internet exchange? Now, who knows the history that they have, the huge internet exchange with the Foreign Intelligence Service? You can do the first part. Yes, uh, they still need that info. Okay, to keep a long story short, D Kicks versus the state or the G10 or BND law the and uh, the protection from basic laws, G10 being the law to restrict communication secrecy in Germany. Now, the thing about protecting from basic rights that was complicated because, uh, the, of course, my first opinion was that it's these basic laws themselves that need protected, but these are protections from those basic laws, as we will see. I'll now skip through a few things at the beginning, so to, just to motivate you to you what this is about. The, uh, it's, it's the protection from surveillance and the thing to be protected is the secrecy of communications, you may have heard of that, and the German Constitutional Court has put it as the perception of freedom that cannot be uh, totally registered and, and recorded, that is a part of the uh, constitutional identity of Germany, which Germany has to strive for on the international stage. And uh, the difficult thing here is that the services that are to protect these basic laws uh, now yield questions where we have to ask whether these services actually violate these basic laws. Are they being protected or not? And to say that in advance, is this just about content data or only metadata? Uh, in Germany, it's a very simple rule. Uh, it's in the criminal code that um, the secrecy of communication not only, apply, not only applies to content, but also the circumstances, who is talking to whom, even attempted connections, if uh, these connections fail. All that is under the protection of this Article 10 of the German Constitution, secrecy of communications. The European Court of Justice has seen it quite, different, uh, quite similarly. They said that metadata uh, actually yield complete profiles of the network, who is doing things with whom, what's their, how do they conduct their lives, who are their friends and all that. So even the metadata is enough to, to recognize all that. It's not, ju not just about content. Um, and that's always a topic if services like the German Foreign Service argue that uh, communication data can be stored. Thankfully, we have a judgment uh, that, we, that ha was gained uh, by reporters without borders in this case. Now, these mass recording is a global trend, unfortunately. Uh, all services try to have systematic access to data, bulk access, that's the term they use. So they want metadata, communications data, but also private collections such as Facebook or Google, which records interests through search queries and they try to access those data directly without filter and only filter in within the service as they have the data. And the more extreme thing are things like the GCHQ in Britain where the way they recorded the data through going through sea cables and were able to do a rollback for, for across a few days at least. So they noticed, oh, there's something interesting here. Who did these people co communicate with a few days beforehand? They try to even find out that. And because of the amount, this, that can be difficult. And that also applies to the espionage software products that services sometimes use. And we've seen that some of the best known malware softwares came from the labs of NSA and co. And that is an increasing problem. This is all about acquisition of data. <coughs> and to understand what the German Foreign Service is doing, what is the actual pro task and profile, uh, it's to uh, supply the government and ministries and police with information uh, as required about political, economical and technological developments, who has new technologies, perhaps uh, military issues, where are there troop movements, who's planning something in the background, but this great uh, term of abstract or concrete threats for the security of the Germany and its citizens. Now, that is something that you can pin everything to. 
and the things we're going to talk about is actually pinned to these abstract and concrete threats. We don't know who is actually planning something, it's just without any particular target. The task profile, uh, the, their priority topics are proliferation, that's weapons trade, international terrorism, uh, failing states, such as Syria perhaps, where states just fall apart, or uh, conflicts about resources, the gas politics and things like that. Uh, we're, are we still getting our oil somewhere or things like that? Officially, the targets are the near and Middle East, North Africa, West and Central Asia, but in case of doubts, they, this can always be <coughs> uh, spun a bit wider. And what's the legal framework here? There are targeted measures where you know who you want to target, who you want to investigate. That's what police forces normally do, but sometimes secret services too. And then providers are compelled through uh, telecommunication surveillance, uh, cell queries, um, or targeted attacks on mobile phones or computers of individual people. And in theory, the so-called a restriction on secretive communications in, in the domestic sphere. So whenever the computer is involved as a tool, uh, so this could ap apply in in the interior, in, in domestically, and um, then you have the topics that we are going to talk about, really, the untargeted uh, strategic surveillance measures, which again affects the article on restriction communication secrecy, um, so this is the restriction of the basic law in the German constitution, and this law explains under which conditions someone can listen into communications, uh, someone from the secret services, we should say. And relatively new since 2016, the law on the Federal Criminal Police Office, uh, no, sorry, the law on, on the Foreign Secret Service, uh, regulating where they can investigate abroad, but no law on domestic investigation. There's always, there always has to be uh, some kind of reference to the international level. Uh, the, uh, but then also cyber threats in the domestic sphere in another law are, are part of it too. Now, uh, now, untargeted surveillance in Germany only happened according to that G10 law until 2016, which was passed in 1999 and of course was challenged legally by NGOs and the opposition, and the German Constitutional Court then ruled that, yes, this is allowed because there are these great protections in the G10 law. The protection of citizens is achieved by only having international telecommunications affected by this restriction to secrecy. Um, now, this was limited to 20% of the uh, capacity of telephone lines, international lines, and the regions that were targeted were defined and what you look for, this all had to be part of the application to restrict someone's secrecy of communications and those applications would have to be checked every three months and those were regarded by the Constitution Courts as vital protections, no targeted search queries and no subject from the core area of private conduct of life which is specifically target, uh, protected by the German constitutions. They don't ha must not be targeted by this. Then in October 2016, the law on domestic domestic communications investigations happened. Now this claims, this law claims that the constitutional questions in the G10 law are not affected because it separates into communications of Germans or EU citizens with uh, and other and and citizens of other countries. So, if you, as a German in Moscow, have a phone call with someone in Paris, you are not allowed to be surveilled. But other uh, foreigners can be targeted wherever they are. Uh, sharing of data with partner services defined by certain treaties is allowed, but according to this new law, and there is a new controlling institution, a new commission that uh, is supposed to allow this in a more open way, but they don't really check anything, they just nod things through in, in practice. Uh, this is actually a legalization of the practices that the NSA, the uh, NSA investigating committee of the German parliament found. They actually found that this is all not possible and then this new law was passed that made it all possible. Now the um, State Secretary in the German Chancellery, who is still responsible for the Secret Services, said in response to a question, 
to question whether this uh, is a, this law was made for the uh, employees of the Secret Service or protecting citizens, the answer was uh, he was only interested in the legal a certainty for the employees of the Secret Service. Now, you could understand someone responsible for the Secret Services saying this, but as an answer from the whole Chancellery, that is not a good answer. Now, what was regulated in this new law? Uh, now, investigations are possible in the domestic sphere, in, in the inland. Um, there are no limits on capacity. They can take as much as they want. Uh, it doesn't have to be limited to certain lines. Uh, only every nine months do, does, does a permission have to be extended, and um, the data can be fished in, in, in the country, and uh, there is no real control anymore. The um, uh, reasoning says that the, the budget of the services would be sufficient as a restriction. The fact that these budgets could always be increased was not really addressed. Now. Uh, this, the saying was that no laws were restricted, uh, uh, no Germans could uh, uh, by accident be surveilled. Uh, other EU citizens were not that well uh, protected according to, to that. Uh, uh, it was significantly targeted because of the restrictions, but even the German Parliament's scientific service said that this is not possible in this way. But the coalition thought this was a very good law with uh, w an international example, actually. So uh, there are complaints, many parties, uh, and the Constitutional Court is looking at it. The opposition and certain NGOs have filed complaints. We are not involved. Um, now, let's go to the DE kicks surveillance to, to, keep, to keep to the time limit. This started in 2008 when we were approached and told that we were an international node. Traffic from several countries comes together. All these lines go to lead to the abroad, which is not really true. Um, so that was why we were supposed to be allowed to, to be surveilled. That was in 2008 and the new law was only passed in 2016. And we have these um, orders for according to the G10 law on restrictions of the secrecy of communications uh, uh, that were used as a foundation. And when the filters did not apply, when Germans communicated with uh, citizens from abroad, that's when the filter did not apply, the G10 filter, but that was solved by the new law. But the data is freely usable uh, by the services as long as it's not two Germans that communicate, communicate between each other. And the use of the data, in that opinion, is permissible even according to paragraph 3, which is specific orders when a Secret Service knows that it wants a certain phone number, a certain person, then it can uh, order this according to paragraph 3, and that since 2015 is possible, and, and the insights glean can actually pass on to other authorities too since 2015. Uh, for example, the Inland Domestic Service, the uh, uh, Agency for Internet Security, uh, uh, Information Technology Security, and uh, uh, requests can also be given to those partner organizations to then delete the data, which is of course very likely to happen. Um, we, in 2009, had our doubts. Uh, we said it won't work this way. Uh, it cannot, this is line based in the law, but these are packet based communications. What is 20% is that line capacity or do I have to look at each type of communication separately? What does that actually mean? How do I translate something that was passed as a law for telephony into this new technology? And also the abroad. We're not really a virtual uh, abroad. Uh, we are transporting data from one router in Frankfurt to another router in Frankfurt. So these international lines are Going, arriving at a route in Frankfurt, th that is connected to another route in Frankfurt, and, and, and from there it goes somewhere. Germany, internationally, we don't know, actually. Uh, so we don't know how these other carriers that we link to have shaped their networks. And that's why the limit, the separation of national and international carriers, most have customers in Germany and abroad are these national or international car carriers. Sometimes the national uh, subsidiaries are our customers, but still it, the network might be an international one. How are you supposed to separate this? 
and everything has to be stored temporarily anyway um, because you have to put things together afterwards if you don't store it temporarily you can't analyze analyze anything how are you going to filter it afterwards no idea and then the chancellor said no no it's all permissible it's all the legal framework is there and then we actually let them soothe us uh, this was the first terrorism debate uh, at the time we had cases where children were groomed by uh, organizations in Cologne or something so we said okay we'll go along we probably are able to trust the German Chancellery now 2009 in 2009 right uh, and then came Snowden and the NSA investigation commission in the German parliament and we realized it doesn't work this way the top uh, legal experts say uh, basic rights apply to foreigners as well this virtual abroad and free sky that's just not doesn't hold and uh, the systems don't work the, the legal protections we which were all rudimentary anyway but the results were much worse and uh, the technical and one violation actually would be too much we found completely impossible I'll come back later to what the figures actually mean um, and the fact that the data that is not marked as G10 uh, could be exchanged now we also thought that that saw that this won't work uh, we can't just ex swap exchange those data so even the former head of the commission overseeing G10 measures said this completely uh, com it, it, it doesn't hold water if you look at this according to G10 and then exchange data it doesn't work you are abusing our commission and uh, to, to, to give a rubber st to get a rubber stamp and uh, the data was also stored much longer than it was than was permissible so we realized we have to get active we can't just continue as we did and we then asked Mr. Papier, a former judge at the Constitutional Court, to uh, uh, write an expertise. He was the head of the German Constitutional Court, uh, formerly, and he wrote, uh, he oversaw the judgment on, uh, <coughs> on earlier cases. And, uh, and he clearly told us that Human rights are not German rights. It doesn't matter who is communicating. If it's in the in Germany, within Germany, then anyway. But if a German service uh, is uh, doing the investigations, then um, probably too. The in in constitution applies. But in any case, protections have to be there. And according to his evaluation, which he actually wrote down in his expertise, the whole orders were impermissible. And it's very rare to get, to get such a clear statement that it's impermissible. So our, all our doubts in 2009 were confirmed and we clearly had to find out whether this was permissible because we did not want to be part of violations of basic rights. That was unthinkable for us. So we said we have to do something and the responsible uh, institution uh, is always the uh, federal administrative court here in Leipzig, the first and last instance. And what was clear that is that all the protections from the G10 law. Uh, well, so we went to the court, we filed our complaint, and some uh, lessons were learned as the papers were exchanged because some things were admitted in in the replies that we didn't know about. Something we didn't even ask for, but they wrote it anyway. For example, that all protections from, from the 2001 judgment had been bypassed. Uh, so the limits for 20% of capacity was administratively, ad administratively bypassed. So um, uh, you sometimes look at 100% of capacity. Now target areas and search terms, you simply put all the orders and all the applications together. Uh, uh, and have a large target area, but that was not the intention. And the filtering is taking place at the service, not the provider. We had actually had overlooked that. Uh, the Constitutional Court had said that one of the protections is that the reduction, these percentages to a certain region and search term have to happen at the provider so that the rest of the data isn't even seen by the, by the service. That was an elementary protection, but that is not happening. Uh, they are getting everything as it is and uh, the other thing that was admitted completely surprising to us was that the uh, uh, some of these uh, protections from the paragraph 10 of the GTN law 
um, there are certain questions when the searches were targeted to individual people that certain purposes have to be adhered to uh, it has to be limited to certain purposes and that was bypassed as well and we thought you cannot do this but it has been done and the information of the people affected according to to the other side was only necessary if storage and identification is actually taking place and storage means that if someone has seen the data analyzed the data and said oh I'm not really interested in that and then deletes it that they do not call storage so that's an interesting thing to discuss, but in our opinion, that is only possible in auto automated systems, not if a human person first has to look at it before it's being deleted and, and analyzed it before it's being deleted. Then it's uh, still storage. Now, surprisingly to us, the way the process worked, uh, the our complaint was simply rejected and only checked by formal criteria, and the reasoning was that... Uh, only a formal check is necessary. The actual content is not interesting to us. All the doubts uh, were not checked. Now, this was about two-thirds of all the papers that had been written that concerned the actual content. The uh, admissibility of the orders was not checked. Uh, the the um, freedom of profession uh, was not affected, they said, and uh, then they d thought they didn't have to do anything, that it, it was all, all right. And they did not deal at all with the question what happens with this inland communication that is actually not be allowed to be passed on. Um, so. so the court didn't care about that at all. The reasoning was primarily that we are not affected, so we cannot act on that because only the G10 Commission is actually capable to do that because that's what I meant for and we cannot do that. And we even told them that we are users and we are afflicted by that as well, but they just said no. That's just... They just... Uh, they said that's just a means to um, circumvent s um, applicable law. So that was uh, a tough. That was tough from them. And it was also quite. It was uh, quite surprising that the. The, the intelligence service has their own way of ordering themselves. We did not even ask for that, so that was really surprising. And we were asking to the Supreme uh, Court, because that was the only way we had, to, uh, and we were asking if that was really okay what they did. And and we said that this does not work at all, this does not apply to all the paper that has been submitted. And we wrote completely different, uh, we made different, uh, completely different applications and uh, none of that was recognized and none of that was even read. And we said this is not how the law works. And and then we said uh, it doesn't work like that. We have to get orders that um, that work within the law. We, c we can't just get orders that are against the law. So the the court order must explain how it's not relevant f for us. So uh, we couldn't even tell if this uh, court order was. Ad administrational that we could fight against it or what it was so it was really incomplete so it was just uh, we were just told no so this is a really long text and I really made it uh, made it this long so you can find all the relevant information in there so the court said no we do not have to explain that 
And we said you cannot apply to this court. That's why we do not have to explain why we do not accept your application. And yeah, they, they just didn't want to do that. They said if it really was against the law, they had to reject everything and just no. And they also said that the um, intelligence service was allowed to do their own administrative um, actions, but they never said if it if they did that. So we know, know nothing more than we knew before, and we have all the same questions as before. So we do not know if... For, uh, according to the content, it's lawful. We do not know if the if the amount of surveillance is lawful. So there is even more doubts than before now. There was no decision. If we have to follow these orders, nothing was decided. So they are allowed to order, but there, it was not decision, it decided if it was in order what they send us. And since they do not, uh, since they do not, or want, do not want to check the um, uh, what the orders contain, they won't check it at all. So we went to the base uh, to the Supreme Court in Germany. Constitutional Court. <laughs> Constitutional court. Uh, yeah, to the Constitutional Court. Sorry, and this is what happened then. Uh, this is what happens now. And we, what we want is that the whole deal will be checked, whether it's uh, lawful. And there's this principle where you only have to follow orders from the state that are lawful. And if, if an order from the state is not lawful, then... Uh, That includes that you just cannot say, the court cannot say, well, we are not checking whether it's lawful. It just doesn't work this way. So this really calls into question the whole G10 law because if everything that uh, in 2010 told us that we can or want to, uh, that we can agree to this G10 law, Nothing of those provisions were really held, and nothing of that works. So the G10 law, how it's really uh, used or lived these days, that does not... Uh, uh, that's just not the same that we agreed to back then. And it's just not okay that uh, a federal administration does all that. It's simply not working. At the same time, we still don't have any way to, for protection of um, civil uh, civilians. So according to the G10 law, uh, civilians cannot apply to a court as long as they are not informed. And The companies, even if they know that something unlawful happened, are not allowed to apply to court as well. So the only one who is left is the G10 Commission, and even they are not allowed to apply to courts. So there is actually no protection at all, as nobody is allowed to apply to the courts. The G10 Commission is not allowed since they are not a juristical person. And so we also said that this is not how the law is supposed to work because nobody is allowed to apply to a court and there must always be a way to protect yourself against unlawful um, proceedings. In our personal opinion, the... Um, administrative court is just weaseling out. They're making it too simple for themselves because they're just refusing. And as the last instance, they really have to do that, but they just don't want to.
wir haben auch, das möchte ich nur vielleicht auch nochmal rausstellen, gegen das neue Gesetz. We also went to court against the new law, the BND, so the Foreign Intelligence Service uh, Law or Act. And we received orders in the end of 2017 and immediately went to court. And in November of this year, they already told us that we should take it back before um, until the law is tested against the Constitution. So we would agree with that if the orders were also taken back until the constitutional aspect is checked. So we are not taking back our complaints, but this is still work in progress. It not much has happened so far. And we are also of the opinion that uh, the same opinion as Amnesty International that this law and this act is not in compliance with the basic law or the uh, constitution of Germany and so we expect it to be taken back but we can't be sure that the constitutional court will really do that. I also want to to stress how important the data procession is. So we don't want to be the ones who protect the uh, civilians, but the problem is that only the filter system of the intelligence service can protect the civilians, protect the people. And now the question is how good is this filter? And well, all this is supposed to be tested and um, checked, but it's not, it's just not tested by anyone. And it can also just be turned off for half a year for internal tests. The intelligence service can just order themselves to, fil to turn off the filters. And what that means is that basically everything Everything from um, not only foreigners, but also inland civilians will be collected and processed, which is really not allowed. And they say, yeah, they are not allowed to really use it, but then still they can weasel out. Yeah, except if, it, if it's according to the profile of the agency. So the quality of the filter system, uh, it has several layers. They described it quite in detail. There is an IP filter, a type filter, a metadata filter, and also the, uh, the information within the communication, not only the metadata. The, there are reports that guess uh, the filter system to be 89 98.5 to 99% accurate and commercial filters are reach 99.5% but they do nothing else so at least if you reach layer 3 and 4 you should uh, already tell people from our in our opinion but now let's at the real uh, real number so in peak we have 6.5 terabytes that's one, uh, 12 million p uh, flows per second and in average we have 3.4 terabytes uh, that is 7.5 million uh, uh, flows per second in average so we have 650 billion connections per day and a very good filter of 99.9 percent would still lose a zero point um, 0.65 billion connections per day and with a filter quality of 99% that's 6 uh, billion connections per day. So if you check the uh, the Parliamentary Control Commission in 2015 there were 58 checks uh, and 6 were final uh, no, one was final, six were not final, 51 were just not known. 2016, it was already 178 um, 
processings, nine of them non-final, four final, and 166 not known. And I just don't know how you get from 1.5 billion connections per day to 178 per year. So how this happens is just a secret of the agency and whoever does that, nobody knows. But the information of afflicted people just cannot happen and the, the, um, the work the commission has to do just cannot be done. And there are also some uh, proceedings that were stopped, but it, the question is if this really works and there probably are way better ways to get the information they really need. And we still do not know how much of this is communications within Germany. So, of course, we'll, if you grab all this data, there will be inner German communications. There are providers that have 85% only German customers, and all that will land at the agency that is not allowed to use this data at all. So uh, this data should have to be deleted immediately, but the control gremium, uh, gremium is not supposed to check on that because the service is not allowed to have this data at all. So it's not their job to check on that. And nobody's checking on that. So one problem is that the foreign intelligence service already proved that they are not to be trusted. Um, the officer so 18 severe violations and 12 official complaints were noted because and the, uh, the commission noted that they cannot force the foreign intelligence service to do anything um, and without legal basis they uh, still recorded personal data and systematically used it and even the data privacy commissioner of the foreign secret service uh, complain about a lack of understanding for the basic rights and the function of protections of basic rights. Now, whether that has been able, been able to be improved, I doubt. If I see what the requests we still receive and how we still are supposed to continue, I have to say it's going to be difficult, right? So, what's the approach? If basic rights are violated, people are supposed to be informed. Uh, interestingly, there's no budget for that. Uh, no one has one, neither the G10 Commission nor the services. Uh, maybe these, uh, these amounts maybe are a bit complicated. The interesting thing is that that's one of the interesting problems that we are talking about very different amounts. The, uh, it's not clear what is the right amount, who is supposed to do it and who is, uh, has to report to whom about what they actually received. Clearly the G10 Commission is supposed to check every three months whether the information of the people affected is still suspended uh, only after five years a final uh, lack of information is possible they have a meeting a month every month of about two hours length I can't really imagine that they check individual cases whether someone is informed or not the problem is if you just use simple mathematics the whole parliamentary control mechanism cannot function if what you are supposed to do constitutionally, which is individual cases, if you, if you can't look at that, it doesn't work. And these five years in, in an interesting circumvention as well. If you have to put someone back in the queue, then the data is not supposed to be deleted. Normally, it should only be kept for six months. Right. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>
can the D6 take it out of the intelligence agency and just... <laughs> Can't you just pull the plug and, and leave it to the services to go to the courts and, and, and pass, uh, get a judgment? Yes, we could do that, but the question is, in the moment you go to court, you're not uh, forced to uh, put it into practice, just in case you go... It happened that in the German state... The, the judgment has to be executed immediately. Uh, if a measure is elementary for the... <laughs> for the existence of the German state, which is what these things say, then you are compelled to uh, implement. If you don't, then you are in violation of the law. Now, if uh, I have a complaint and therefore tell others that they are violating the law and then violate the law yourself, that's not a good way to go about it. So as we are compelled, we do continue to implement. It's a bit difficult, but as I said, it's difficult to argue in front of judges why you are breaking the law yourself because you're actually telling the other people the other side that they are violating the law. Okay, second microphone. I have the following question. When the provider of Lavabit uses servant in with Edward Snowden, Daten seiner Nutzer nicht schützen kann. That he cannot protect his customer's data. Uh, er Ist dieser Schritt beim D6 nicht Jahre überfällig? Is this act of behalf of D6 not about due date? Wouldn't it be time for the D6 to close down? Are you suggesting to shut down the internet? No, I mean we should. Uh, it's a bit more complicated. It's not our customers. The, we are. It's not the carrier. It's, it's the, we are. Our customers are the carriers. Uh, so the actual end customers are very indirect. So we suggest we send data uh, using encryption. We wanted to, but there is no standard that we can agree on. But so the exchange has to happen somewhere, and the carriers have to exchange data. If we were to shut down our services, the data would use other lines that would underlie the same problem. So um, it's a difficult subject. And we haven't quite arrived at that conclusion yet. Microphone I need an explanation for the relation of the numbers. The smallest number in 2016 and billions of data uh, in 178. This is the official number of the Parliamentary Control Gremium. In the strategic surveillance of date communication service, that's 178 per year. We think it's a weird number as well, how to get from A to B, but this is the filtering application. Thank you. Good question. Someone from the internet? If Great Britain is not part of the European Union anymore, are those participants of the six thrown out? This is not necessary, as I explained, that they're inside. That's the German Intelligence Service Federal Service. According to our knowledge, they are not listening, so I don't have any clue that they're listening, but but we are happy. German colleagues are always happy to swap. The German services like to exchange data with the British colleagues anyway, whether they're in the EU or not. But if we win our case, then maybe we can put a stop to that and stop this kind of surveillance from happening. But uh, although it doesn't quite answer the question, but I would like to clarify that we are accusing the German state of violating German laws if it stuck to the law and the law would then allow this, then we would probably not take action. I have to make that clear. If society arrives at the opinion that this is permissible, then this discussion has to be placed within society. What is allowed, what secret services can do. Uh, we are only acting against secret services doing something that they are not allowed to do. 
and that goes far beyond this is German citizens data being leached in within the country and there is no legal foundation for that that's not possible and volumes uh, if there is a 20% limit somewhere in the law then I can't just look at the 100% and just uh, accumulate all these code or the, these administrative orders to look at all the data that's not how it works that is not on uh, so if the service would stick to the law uh, Maybe the law has to be changed. Uh, that would be someone else's task to influence. The NGOs do that. Um, we do uh, get in touch with Parliament to improve the law so that uh, can actually things can actually be looked up. In Norway, you have this thing where the Commission there can look at all the measures that their service is actually executing at the, at the time. And we cannot do that. We have to wait for the report from the service. And so these are things that you can tackle. and. Uh, Yes. I would like to go back to the lava bit case. The solution was that the, the keys that were demanded were printed out. Isn't that a measure that, that yeah, yeah, you could den apply in this case that to print out the traffic <laughs> and forward it to the responsible person? <laughs> like mail on a database, uh, hard drive. Uh, you can do anything with latency, but that not. Microphone Yo, 7. Hallo. Uh, ja, ich habe zwei Fragen und zwar einmal, äh, wie ist die Resonanz von der Politik What's selber? The also ein hat man gehört, weil mit der Mathematik haben sie es ja meistens nicht so schwer als mit der They Technik selber. Like und die zwei How's the response of politicians? Surprisingly, it's very diverse. The opposition think it's very great. They're doing well. But also the coalition, they're against it and there has to be change. It's a difficult subject. Everybody is working for security. Um, Deceiving, they always get what they want. It's a very difficult task on a political, um, on a political field, but we're very hopeful that there will be this change going on. The Constitution courts has responded in a long time. It has, hasn't, has been quiet for a long time. They have a lot of cases pending. And uh, the fact that, that they hope that someone will happen next, something will happen next year, the chamber might change, and uh, we hope that something will be decided before that. Um, ja, die zweite Frage wäre, uh, wenn die Klage jetzt durchgeht so und uh, sie quasi gewinnt, uh, wer haftet denn dann win? da an der Bundesbehörde oder bei den Bundesbehörden an sich? Es uh, ist ja schwer zu haften, oder wird da der einzelne BND-Angestellte uh, uh, vom Arbeitsplatz abgezogen von der Polizei werden? That's an interesting question. That's, that's quite difficult. So the, the employee did break the law if they did that knowingly. So I have to um, say that their boss really does his job protecting his employees. But unfortunately, in, this, in such cases, usually nobody is punished. Nobody has to fear to be punished in any way. Maybe they lose their job, but uh, since they're state employees, they will not be. They will not lose their job. They will just get a pension. So you can't really expect a lot. We just want to put an end to this. Microphone number four. <laughs> If we remember, if we think back to the fact that Safe Harbor was abolished because this was untargeted mass surveillance in the US, because that existed in the US, isn't this kind of thing also against European basic rights? Could the European Court of Justice uh, get involved or 
Conversely, if you uh, use the D6 note, are you then actually guilty of violating privacy because mass surveillance is taking place there? But then there's always the metadata too. I understand the idea, but unfortunately national security is not part of data protection and privacy. So European law will not does not really cover this so maybe you will be right in court but usually nothing follows normally there's just a new law and they'll just keep on doing the same thing because it's just one law they were violating and that gets corrected so usually these laws just don't apply to national security. GDPR, for example, excluding national security. My question goes to a similar, in a similar direction. Is now, how difficult is it to have all this work within German borders and not look abroad? You have to look at what is happening where. And if countries like Italy or France, nobody will usually think to uh, to take the the country or the the government to court because they want the data. We are really advanced in this because we have quite a good understanding of the law and how, what the law should be like for civilians. And if you look at the states within Germany, you can see how different the uh, this is handled. And it's very difficult to keep an overview of everything. Everything. So carriers are sometimes asking us, what do I have to give to whom? If they are asking, so people are asking for different stuff and the law situation is very different in different states. So if the law of one federal state uh, allows something or obliges us for something, it's not quite clear. Microphone two. The question is what practically the content of such an administrative order is. Can you talk about this? Uh, what is, are you compelled to hand out? Uh, immediate execution. What? So normally you're not allowed to even talk about this, so I could not tell you what is in this... Uh, orders. Usually, it uh, sometimes it's quite detailed on why it's necessary, including some terroristic group names. Sometimes it's quite strange, and human trafficking might be involved. Yeah, so uh, sometimes it's not really uh, reasonable why this is now related to human trafficking. But yeah. Question from the news. How about the surveillance of those 20% of traffic? How are these 20% calculated? And is this legally, does, does it hold water? That's the big question that we always have. We always were questioning that this is reasonable. And uh, uh, um, the federal office suggested that you just sequest all the data into piles and then you can take 20% of the piles which sounded quite reasonable in my opinion but now it sounds quite different that they just write so many uh, orders and applications that they just take 20% of everything they wanted and just look at 100% of that so the question of 20% does not really apply because you just uh, write the correct I orders. I was almost about to laugh, sorry. And yes, it is a laughable judgment. Microphone 8, please. Right, first of all, a huge thanks for trying to protect our rights. Please continue, don't give up. Although it seems to be a fight against the windmills. <laughs> Um, now my question, you said that as a citizen you can't immediately apply to the G10 Commission. Now, according to Article 13 
Uh, in the copyright regulation directive, uh, there was the question of is access to by citizens to the uh, to the providers of would it be an approach here to to create a sign of kind of portal? You mean the portals without borders portal? Yeah. <laughs> that only the G10 Commission is applicable for that, or responsible for that, that wrote the uh, uh, administration court, and there is supposed to be a right to complain, but it's a good question if you can complain if you are not informed. And I myself, I'm trying to, um, to reason that I cannot go back from my knowledge and therefore know that I'm... Uh, under surveillance, but I doubt that they will understand that correctly. Microphone one. Hello, mich würde mal uh, interessieren, woran erkennt man, dass ein Traffic deutsch ist? Also wenn ich heute einen VPN-Dienst verwende und dann koppeln die Daten zum Beispiel in Holland raus. Might be in the Netherlands. I never said I know it, but the service provider says they know how to do it. The very interesting thing is that Germans For Germans, it has to be included 100% that the data that is re-analyzed already in the law, it states that if two Germans communicate abroad, we can secure it. If two French uh, communicate abroad, we never know. That's how it's stated in the law. I don't, don't see the point why that's so. Nobody can explain it. They just took it over. Are they looking at Do they look at the connections or at the information? They can look in the data, but how deep the analysis, the depths of the analysis cannot be estimated. It's hard to estimate. It's very complicated, as it doesn't only differentiate between in home and abroad. It would work if communication is only in a home and abroad. According to the BND law, we could take a look at it. However, looking at the nationality, the communication of two Germans abroad cannot be... Up. So the only way to do it is how to look, is to look at the data. I have no idea how they want to do it. This is how it's in the reason of law. Yeah, you know what this man um, deserves now? A louder um, applause and stand up. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you very much for your work. Thank you for listening. Klaus Landemann.